Hey everyone, Eric here. In honor of our first ever palindrome day, which by the way is something I just made up, let's have some fun together by using the copy and mirror tools to model something symmetrical. So I should probably start by explaining what a palindrome is exactly. It's basically a word or a name that reads the same backwards as forwards. So why I chose this topic for today is that it's recorded on the 22nd day of the 11th month of the 22nd year. So on that note, let's go ahead and get modeling. Okay, so here we are in our model. You can see I've got my 11, my 22, 11, 22. That was just kind of there for fun, just so that you could see what I was talking about as far as today's date. And now we're gonna move over to, I think the star of our show, what we're gonna to model together, which is Eve. So if you look at Eve's name, the way that I've written it here, I've kind of turned the backwards E around. You can see that both Eve is symmetrical and her name is actually a palindrome. So it's spelled Eve, whether it's spelled forwards or backwards. So you get the idea. Let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm gonna be pretty quick here just because this is skill builder and we don't have a ton of time, not a live modeling session. Uh, what I want to do is start with, I have a trace view set up here. What trace basically means is that I already have my um, x-ray mode turned on and stuff so I can see my line work. And I also already added a dashed line representing sort of the middle of, uh, of Eve here so that I can basically focus on modeling or drawing just half of her and then we'll let um, copying and mirroring and the follow me tool do the rest of the work. So with that, let's go ahead and get going. I'm gonna start here on the head. Um, the way I do my tracing with curves like this is I try and find the tangent. So if I see a curve here, I might think, well, maybe right about there is the tangent. So what I would do is basically draw a line over from each of those, and then I'm going to copy that line over so that I get it on the other side. I know it may not line up exactly with the reference image here, but that's okay. So I don't need that. I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to my two-point arc. I'm using, I'm using the keyboard shortcut. So if you don't see me go back and forth to the tool set, that's why. Now, the reason why I copied this over is because even though I'm only going to model half the head, I can't model half an arc. Well, not very easily anyway, and get a tangent. So that's what these reference lines are for. I'm going to go, I'm going to use that as sort of my guide. And then once I don't need the other half, I'm just going to get rid of it. So just kind of assume that our tangent point is is here and again we can just if it's off i may have to go back and say let's redo one if it doesn't look right um what you want to do is basically get that to turn pink so it depends on whether you start the arc here in which case that's not going to work i want to start it a little bit further down and i'm going to go ahead and try and get it at least as close to tangent as possible so let's go with that Erase any stray lines or reference lines. Again, I only need half of it, so I can't cut that in half yet. I need that middle line. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that center line in, get rid of half of that, and you can see I've got a face ready to go. I'm gonna save myself a little bit of time by offsetting this. And then if it's not perfect here, that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and instead of doing that arc process again, I'm just gonna go ahead and scale. In this case, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this out a little bit and that way I don't have to sort of redraw all of those again if it's not if it's if it's not smooth then I may have to go in uh, and fix that but let's go with that for now again we're going a little bit quick just so that we can get all the way through this in our time I'm going to go ahead and delete that so now I've got the basically once I draw the eyeball that's a circle and then I'm going to use the scale tool to give it that sort of oval shape and get it into position. So once I've just drawn half of it, I can copy the whole thing. I can right select, use the move and modifier to basically move copy. I'm gonna use the scale tool, hit the modifier again. What it's gonna do is it's going to, and then negative one for the scale factor. What it's gonna do is flip that over and depending on if you use the modifier or not, it'll um, keep that centered. So that's it. I don't need that center line. Again, that's gonna go, that's gonna go, that's gonna go. Now I have, Everything here is a face. If I turn my x-ray mode off, you can see a little bit better that those are enclosed faces. So great. Let's, before we turn this into 3D, let's just draw the rest of the body. I'm going to draw a line again from here to here. That's just my reference line for my arc. 
And then I'm going to figure out where I think is tangent on the bottom, which I think is maybe here. I'm just kind of rolling with it here. And then I'm going to take this first arc, get it as close as I can, and then I'm going to use both of those arcs, both of those lines to kind of guide that arc until it turned, until I see where the tangent is. And close that off with a center line. And I should have grouped the head separately, but that's okay. Um, I do want to, excuse me, undo that. I do need to make sure that, of course, that I get this last arc here because you can see that her head sits in this kind of bowl. So now I can go ahead and erase those and erase that. So now I have half of her body. I'm not going to mirror it over, and I'll show you why, because I don't need to. Um, you'll see why in just a second. So what I want to do is, let's go ahead and make this 3D. I'm going to make this body and this head into a component. And that way I can actually, I'm going to work, I'm actually going to work on it. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to work on a copy of sort of a, a vertical copy. Enter 90 degrees. And then there we go. So this is where we're going to start to use the follow me tool. This is where we're going to, we also don't need that interface, and I'll show you why in just a second. We just need the outer head. Because the interface we're going to need actually for draping, and we need these two parts of the body. In fact, we didn't even need, we only needed half of the head. I mirrored it only because I needed the other eyeball, not because the head needs it. So in this case, what we're going to do now is we just need a circle on that center line. That circle is just going to be my reference. And I do want to make sure that I'm bumping up the segments so that I get a nice smooth, so I get a little bit more detail in my uh, follow me. So with the circle selected, I'm going to grab my follow me tool, spin that. I'm going to do the same thing, circle selected, follow me tool, spin the body, delete that. If I turn my x-ray mode off, you can see that there it's sort of my shape. That looks good. I am going to also soften smooth edges. You can see it's sort of maybe because I didn't weld or something, but um, I can just go ahead and get rid of that sort of extra line there by softening and smoothing it. So I thought I was working on a copy, but I must have not. I must have grouped it instead of made it a component. So my mistake, I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to rotate this down. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and now I got to do this again, unfortunately. I got to find where that point is. Rotate a copy. 90 degrees. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I still have the face. And the face I want to use uh, the drape tool for. So the face is here. You can't see it unless I put on x-ray. There's the face. I'm going to lift that up. And I've got two options here. I can come over here and I can go view, tool palettes, sandbox. And I can select that and just use the drape and see if that works. Okay, that works fine. It did drape on the back side. I don't know why that is. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those that back side. So drape worked fine. Sometimes I use intersect with model instead of drape. And because that's a group and not a component, I just have to delete it. So here's where we have to do the arm. And we're going to go ahead and give the face color in just a second. But now I want to do the arm. I want this arc here again that I didn't save. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw a rectangle. Select this, say intersect with model. And what that's going to do, it's going to give me kind of an outline, uh, just kind of a flat 2D outline, right? So I had already drawn this, but then I deleted it when I made it into 3D. But I want this arc here. And there's a reason why, because I want this, I want that, I want this arc to represent the curve of this arm. So I pretty much only need. If I get rid of that and that, then I can select this arm. It's okay if I, I'll get rid of it. I'll just move that off to the side. There we go. That's easier. Don't need any of that. That was just for reference. Now this arm here, that represents basically the curve of the body that the arm would sort of fit into naturally. So let's go ahead and draw the profile using my circle tool. I'm just going to kind of eyeball what I think that curve is, copy that up to there, give it an arc that I should be tangent, 
again, you can see I'm just kind of repeating a lot of the same tools. Tangent arc, copy, mirror, you know, rotate, that kind of stuff. So in this case, I want, again, the same thing. I just want half. And I'm going to copy this over, off to the side, use the scale, negative one. And snap that into place. There we go. So now I have basically the arc that represents the curve and the shape of the arm. In fact, if I don't want that to be, because remember, too much symmetry is kind of boring. In this case, what I might want to do is make the top of the arm a little bit um, wider than the bottom of the arm, right? So it kind of tapers as it goes down. So let's go ahead and make another copy. I'm going to go ahead and weld this together. Love that 2022 version has weld in it. And I'm going to make a copy of this, 90 degrees. And what I'm doing with this, and the reason why I did that copy is because I want to know, I want to know, let's see if I can get my rotate. This is the arc, this basically is going to be the thickness of the arm. So I want, that's the shape of it, and that's sort of the height of it, right? So that's kind of what I need. So I'm going to switch, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm actually going to use an extension. View tool palettes, come down over here to, let's see, where is it? Soap bubble. So I'm not gonna explain how this works. There's tons of videos on that. I'm gonna skin it, give it a high number like 30, and then I'm gonna bubble it. If it's a reversed face, I'm gonna need to enter my bubble pressure in negative. So let's try negative 200. And I, I know because I did this before, so I know that 200 works really well at sort of creating an arm that is in sort of that uh, that sort of profile. So I'll set I'll move, pull this off to the side now. You can see how fast that was. That's why I thought that extension was kind of cool to use. And let's get rid of those that grid line. And just to be good habits, I'm going to reverse that face. So I could have done that before or I could do that afterwards. Make this a component because we have two of them. It's two arms. And Going to rotate that around 90, go back into plan view so I can line this up and sort of lines up right about there. Now, if I want to, I can kind of give her a little bit more expression, you know, open up those arms. And I'm going to go ahead and mirror that negative one back to plan view. And I don't want it super symmetrical, so maybe one arm is like more down and the other arm is more open, right? Kind of cool. So one thing we haven't done is added color to the face. I'm going to go ahead and give some color really fast just before I forget. Color and dark blue for eyes. That's going to be good enough. So now group all this together, or should I say make it a component? because That's probably the right thing to do. Rotate Eve up 90 degrees so that she's floating. And of course, give her a white color to get rid of that blue, the reverse face that you see on the inside of the arm. Now, that's a little fat and chunky. I'm going to just finish up by giving her a little bit more grace and elegance. If I take this body here, I'm going to just kind of squeeze it in. That's kind of what I remember from the film is something a little bit more tapered. And then, of course, the head itself. I'm going to lift that up. Switch to sometimes helps to view this in perspective mode and give this a little bit of uh, maybe, I don't know, a little rotation, little little personality, something like six degrees, maybe seven, eight degrees. Okay. And then I'm going to turn my reference image off, my dashed line off, get rid of what we call the boneyard, turn shadows on. And I think that pretty much does it. So that's it for our first ever palindrome day here at SketchUp. If you like these skill builders, you want to see more of them, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And of course, be sure to leave us a comment and let us know what you think. We actually do read and respond, so let's keep the conversation going there. Thanks, and see you next time.